Hi, and welcome to Kachivachi. I'm Jordan, and today we are making face masks. This particular version has a pocket here, and that way you can add a filter of some sort, and then it also has a wire in the nose so that you can make it more secure and more comfortable. We will be using a serger and elastic in order to make this type of mask. If you don't have either of those things, check out the link below. We have a video just for you of how to make this same mask without those things. Before we get going, let's take a look at the supplies that we need and then we'll head into our actual project. First, you're gonna need some fabric. You'll need at least a nine inch by 14 inch rectangle along with two three inch wide by at least four and a half inch long rectangles. I used a rotary cutter and a ruler to cut those, um, in which case I then needed a cutting mat. If you're drawing it on and using scissors to cut it out, you would um, not need a rotary cutter. You'll also need a marking utensil and just a basic ruler, a safety pin, I used twist tie material. You could also use pipe cleaner or binder prongs or whatever you have on hand that would create a nose bridge. We need two nine inch pieces of elastic, pair of snips, pins. These are glass head pins so I can iron over them because that's really nice. An iron and a pressing surface and then thread to match and a sewing machine in good working order as well as a serger that's threaded up with just a neutral thread of your choice. Let's get started on your face mask. The very first thing I'm going to do is overlock stitch both short ends of my rectangle here for my face mask. So it's the nine inch sides and I'm just using a three thread overlock. You can use a four or whatever your preference may be. Now that we have our edges surged, I'm gonna take it to my iron and press it in half. I want to press it in half lengthwise, lining up my two surged edges here. Now I'm gonna use my marking utensil and I'm gonna measure one and a half inches in from the outside edge of my face mask and I'm gonna make a mark there on both sides. Let's take our face masks over to our sewing machine now, and we're gonna start at the end and back stitch, and then we'll sew to our mark and back stitch, and then we're gonna move across to the other side and repeat that process. Let's go back to our pressing station here, and we're gonna press that seam open. We wanna make sure that we don't have any of our overlock showing. We wanna press all the way across here and just make sure we keep a nice even fold. Next, I'm gonna turn it right side out and then I'm gonna take that to my sewing machine and top stitch right along this bottom fold as close to that as we can get. Back stitch when you start and back stitch when you stop. Next, we're gonna lay that flat and measure a half inch above our seam and put a mark there on either side of our face mask. We then will take and fold our mask until the edge of the fold is at that marking. So you'll have approximately a half inch down until your opening. Now we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine and we're gonna start on the side of our face mask so we don't have any back stitches in our finished product. And I'm gonna back stitch when I start and end and we're just gonna stitch all the way around the perimeter of our face mask to secure everything in place. This is one of the really satisfying parts for me. Now we're gonna insert our twist tie. I took a 19 and a half inch piece and folded it twice so that it's three strands about six and a half inches long and then I'm twisting those together just so it's a little easier to work with and it gives you more stability in your nose bridge. We're going to insert the twist tie into this top edge of our face mask and then we're going to pin it so that it holds it at the top so we don't accidentally sew over it. Now we go back to our sewing machine back stitching when we begin and end and we're just going to stitch along the bottom of that top fold. This locks our twist tie into place. Now that we have all the basic structure done, we're gonna go put in our pleats. So I'm headed back to my pressing station and I'll begin by pressing my face mask in half. I will then press the top and bottom to that center crease so that I'll have three creases and that lets me know where I need to pleat. 
Starting with one side of your face mask, you're gonna fold at that crease and then fold back down approximately a half of an inch, creating your first pleat. You will pin that in place and repeat until you have three pleats on this side. You wanna make sure that your pleats don't overlap. They just nestle one right next to the other. It makes it easier when you go to sew. And it's always a good idea to make sure you don't poke or pin yourself while you're doing this. You'll repeat this process on the other side. I will also press my pleats into place while we're at our pressing station, we're also going to take our three inch by four and a half inch rectangles and press them in half lengthwise. I will then take those raw edges and fold them to the center and then press this in half once more to conceal all of those raw edges. This is going to create our binding that seals off the edges of our face mask. We're gonna take and open up the binding strip that we just created, and on the long edge, we will line up that raw edge with the raw edge of our face mask. I will then take that to my sewing machine and stitch in that first crease that's about a half inch to five eighths of an inch from the edge of my face mask. Backstitch when you start and backstitch when you stop. This seals off the edges of your face mask and also creates the channel that your elastic will ride in. Repeat this on the other side of your face mask. Now that we have that stitched, I'm gonna take and cut off the excess of my rectangles here. And so you just wanna have a half inch above and below your face mask. Anything more than that is just a bit excessive. So I'm just using my rotary cutter here and trimming this down. We're gonna to head to our pressing station now. So I'm gonna flip my face mask over so that the seam that I just created is on the bottom. And then I'm gonna press this top edge down so that I don't have any raw edges. So I'll press this top down and press the bottom up. And then I'm going to create that fold once more, pressing it, fold it, over so it's covering all of the raw edges of my face mask and then we're going to stitch right along this edge to seal that together. Repeat on the other side. And that's the basic structure of our face mask. Now we've just got to put in our elastic. So I'm going to begin by just cutting two nine inch strips of elastic. This is quarter inch wide. I'm gonna put a safety pin in one side to feed it through my channel. Now that my safety pin is safely out the other side of my channel, I'm gonna remove the safety pin, overlap the ends of my elastic, making sure there aren't any twists in it, and then I'm gonna zigzag stitch that overlapped portion. This will connect and close off our elastic and that zigzag still allows stretch there so that it won't break the first time it goes over someone's face. Repeat this process on the other side. And there you have it, a completed face mask. Alrighty guys, you have made your first face mask, it's super exciting. And so from here, you can go into production for all your friends and family to keep them safe in this really trying time. This is gonna be for my mother-in-law who is immunocompromised and I'm sure we all have quite a few family members and friends that we know and want to keep safe and protect and just show some love right now. I hope this was helpful for you. If you don't have a serger or if you don't have elastic because that's really hard to come by these days, you can check out our other video that's specifically for that face mask. We also have another option this is a little bit more work to do it this way, but if you can't find elastic, you could make a tie and feed that through your channel here and then stitch at the beginning and end. That's gonna give you the same sort of effect as our other video with just a little bit more work. And so you'd have tie strings to attach it to your person. You could also use ribbon doing it that way for people who don't like to make ties. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for joining us. 
Thank you so much for being a part of this sewing community that's so eager to help in this time of need. If you have any friends who know how to use a sewing machine, absolutely share this video with them and let's get busy protecting our nation and our friends. This is one of those things that we can do to help flatten the curve and get back on track with where we wanna be in life. So I hope this video was helpful and useful for you. If you wanna see more content like this, then subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and in the meantime, stay safe and sew.